Good morning students. My name is Samuel Chuku Emeka. In this video we shall talk about modular arithmetic and the concept of modulo. Modulo. There were some scientists who were prominent in this study. Among them are Leonhard Euler. He is a Swiss mathematician and a German mathematician Carl Gauss. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing their name right. But they are prominent in this study of modulo. So what exactly is modulo? Modulo is an arithmetic system whereby numbers wrap around themselves. Numbers tend to wrap around. Wrap around. They continue from the beginning. They reach a particular stage and they continue from the beginning. Let's take for instance the clock. You know, uh, we are on a 12 hour clock. On a 12 hour clock you know, let's say it starts from 12, right? It starts from 12 and it ends in 12. Now, what will you say about 1 o'clock? What will you say about 2 o'clock? Like, we are on a 12-hour clock, right? But we have 24 hours in a day. So imagine that we are on a 12-hour clock, but we have 24 hours in a day. So, because we have 24 hours in a day, we should have something like the 13th hour, the 14th hour, the 15th hour, the 16th hour. But we don't usually say that. Okay? Now, that means that something is wrapping around. Something is wrapping around itself. So, when you stop at uh, 12, when you get to the 13th hour, you call it one o'clock. So you it has wrapped around, it has continued again from one o'clock. Then two o'clock, instead of the fourteenth hour, it's now two o'clock. Okay. The military time is different. Military time is like twenty four hour clock, fourteen fourteen o'clock, fifteen o'clock and the rest of them. So let's say that uh it's like seven o'clock and Somebody asks you, okay, what time is it? Nine hours from now. You know, it's seven o'clock. And then somebody asks you, okay, what time is it going to be? Nine hours from now. It's seven o'clock in the morning. And somebody asks you, what time will it be? Nine hours from now. So ordinarily, you will say, of course, seven plus nine, right? And seven plus nine, of course, gives you 16. 16 hours. 16th hour is 4 o'clock, right? And you say 4 o'clock. It should have been 16 hour. But because we're on a 12 hour clock, you now say 4 o'clock. Why? Because we now see that 16 mode 12 is 4. We're on a 12 hour clock, so it's mode 12. And 16 mode 12 gives us 4. So, that is how this modular concept came about. Now, how did we get four, actually? We can now formulate, we can now do some formulas. So, if we have 16 mod 12, of course we know it's four, because we counted and it's on a 12 hour clock, so it wrapped around, gave us four. But we can do it another way. We can say, okay, what is the highest multiple of 12 in 16? Like 16 divided by 12. What is it going to give us? It will give us one whole number, 4 out of 12. You know, this is an improper fraction, and this is a mixed number. So 16 divided by 12 actually gives us one remainder 4. So... We now say that 16 mod 12 is equal to 4. 
We are only concerned with the remainder. In the modulo, we are concerned with the remainder. Just know that. And this concept of modulo, the study of modular arithmetic, deals with pos positive integers. We can also have negative integers, but I will tell you the conditions where those exist as we go on in this video. But just know that modulo arithmetic deals with only integers. We don't really care about fractions. Only integers. So 16 more 12 gives us 4. Let's try another one. If we have 12 mod 9, let's say we were on, on a 9 hour clock and it reaches 12. 9 hour clock means when it stops at 9, then it starts again from 1 and continues like that. So when it stops at 9, that means that 9 will be 0. Actually, the 10 will be 1 o'clock. Assuming we have a 9 hour clock, the 11 will be 2 o'clock, and the 12 will be 3 o'clock. So 12 mod 9 gives us 3. You see, that is the way it works. So that mode where you start, you assign it a 0 because it starts from there. Then the next number is 1, and that is the way it goes. Just like in 16 uh, mode 12, 16 mode 12, and we got 4. We assign that 12 is 0. Then, of course, 13, it will wrap around and start again. That becomes 1. 14, that becomes 2. 15, that becomes 3. 16, that becomes 4. And it's 4. But we don't want to waste time always doing this method. We can also say that our, nine, our 12 mode 9 right when we divide 12 divided by 9 it gives us one remainder 3 so our 12 mode 9 is 3 what of 25 mode 2 25 mode 2 you ask yourself what is the highest multiple of 2 in 25 that is the second way of doing it what is the highest multiple of 2 in 25 you say okay it's 24 right so, this is uh, 25 mod 2 will now give us 12 remainder 1. So, 25 mod 2 is 1. Instead of assigning 2 equal to 0, 3 equal to 1, 4 equal to, I mean, we don't want to do it that way. You know, so, we now, this is just an easy way to do it. So, this is for positive integers, actually. We have the, uh, the dividend being a positive integer, the divisor being a positive integer. You know, you can also look at this as dividend, dividend over divisor to give you quotient, quotient whole number remainder over divisor quotient whole number remainder over divisor here our dividend is 25 our divisor is 2 our quotient of course is 12 our remainder is 1 and our divisor is 2 so but like I said the modulo deals with the remainder so 25 divided by 2 gives you 12 remainder 1. Therefore, 25 mod 2 gives you 1. Can we have this negative? Can we have a negative dividend? Yes, we can. For instance, let's look at negative 8 mod 5. Now, if you divide, of course, usually you will say this, negative 8 divided by 5. Right? And of course, negative 8 divided by 5 will give you negative 1, remainder, negative 3. Now, but listen, in modular arithmetic, our remainder will always be positive. 
we don't want our remainder to be zero, uh, to be negative, I'm sorry. We don't want our remainder to be negative. Our remainder will always be positive. So rather than doing negative one remainder three, we can also say it this way, that negative eight divided by five is equal to negative two remainder two. So that means that our negative eight mod five is equal to two. Rather than having negative eight mod five to give us negative three, our negative eight mod five will be equal to two. In my website, on I'm, I'm, on my website, I have several links to calculators involving modulo. Use those. Now, if you use the calculator on your website for negative mod, for negative uh, dividends, mode five, it will give like if you if you use the calculator on your uh, I mean, on, on your computer, I mean on your computer or on your laptop, and if you're using Windows Seven, for instance, okay, if you use the calculator on your uh, laptop or computer, is for for positive modulus it's gonna work for positive dividends mode uh, a positive integer it's gonna work no problem but for negative it will give you like if you do negative eight mod five it's gonna give you negative three and that's wrong negative eight mod five is two just know that so if you're using the uh the calculator on the scientific calculator of course you have mode if you put if you click on if you open up your calculator on your computer you click on view and you click view menu and you select scientific then you will see a mode so if you put it in like this it will give you negative three and that's wrong so but I have some calculators links to calculators on my website that you can use for this okay let's do more problems of the negative before we call it a day what if we have um, negative 2 mod 9 okay now you will see that this is negative 2 divided by 9 right negative 2 divided by 9 like I said we don't want fractions negative 2 divided by 9 of course will give you rather than say rather than say and let me write it in red rather than say negative one remainder seven because if you have negative two divided by nine it gives you negative one remainder seven rather than say this you have to uh, yeah you can actually you can say this because it's negative one remainder seven so i guess i'll write it in negative one remainder seven because our remainder is positive now you want you want your remainder to be positive the quotient can be negative no problem but your remainder should be positive that's what you always want you want your remainder to be positive the quotient can be negative but your remainder must be positive for modulo there is something interesting here when we looked at negative 8 mod 5 of course if we like look at absolute value which is 8, of 8 is greater than 5, we see that rather than saying uh, negative 1 remainder negative 3, of course the modulo to be negative 3, we had it to be negative 2 remainder 2. So you will notice something here that this is a positive remainder but this is a negative remainder. So we will use this we shall not use this but for this one this is negative one remainder seven so we are still gonna use this it's still correct okay it's still correct because it's a positive remainder let's do some more examples what if we have a negative 25 mode 4 so you say 4, four divide negative 25 right you might say it's negative 6, right? Remainder, negative 1. But we have here a negative remainder. We don't want to say that. We don't want to say negative 1. Rather, we now say, okay, this should be negative 7 
remainder 3. Of course, if you do 4 times negative 7, it gives you negative 28. Negative 28 plus 3 gives you negative 25. So we now have that negative 25 mod 4 equal to 3. Rather than saying negative 25 mod 4 equal to negative 6, equal to negative 1, we now have that negative 25 mod 4 equal to 3. Right? Let's do another one. Let's do more. Especially for the negatives, I know I'm kind of uh, emphasizing more on the negatives because it's kind of confusing for students. What if we have negative 4 mod 7? Negative 4 divided by 7. Of course, that will give us negative 1, remainder 3. So this is good. So this means that negative 4 mod 7 is equal to 3. Right? What if we have uh, negative 18 mod 7? Negative 18 mod 7. Rather than say negative 2 remainder negative 4, rather than say negative 2 remainder negative 4, we shall say negative 3 remainder 3. 7 into uh, negative 18 will give you. E I know the, easy, the thing that comes first in your mind is to say negative 2. Then that gives you negative 14. Remaining negative 4. Negative 14, negative 4 gives you negative 18. But we don't want that because our remainder is a negative. Remember, our, remem our remainder for modular arithmetic must always be positive. So we now have negative 3. The next one, of course, that gives you... That gives us negative 21. Negative 21 uh, plus uh, negative 21 remainder 3. Because negative 21 plus 3 gives us negative 18. So, this is the general idea of finding the modulo. Let's do one more positive and then we can call it a night. Uh, what if we have a 21 mode? 3. In this case, 3 can divide 21. So that means it's 7 remainder 0. Remember, the modulo is always remainder. It's always the remainder. All right. Thank you so much, students, for listening. I hope you understood what I did. And you have a great day. Thank you.